what's going on guys all right so i was checking the system out the other day um it's the upstairs system goodman um and his uh piston orifice um so when checking it i'll show you the uh i'll hook up in a second and show you the readings uh on the screen but the superheat down to zero line temperature way too cold head pressure is way up there um when I came and checked it, it was almost 90 outside and the head pressure was getting close to 600. Um, it was in the fives. Today it's going to be a lot less. But um, <clears throat> when I started looking at it, it definitely looked like a piston restriction. And I've seen that several times when the, uh, they get a little bit of trash inside that orifice and it can really increase your head pressure. All right, guys, so as you can see, the head pressure is very elevated. Um, like I was saying the other day when I checked it, it was hitting 500. Uh, and you'll notice this start, the head pressure will start to drop like it's doing right now. And then um, once it, the pressure is able to build back up, it'll shoot back uh, really high again. And the superheat down to zero, This uh, that coil up there is just being completely flooded. Um, <clears throat> so if I had to guess, it might be more of a, sized piston uh too big of a size but we'll see as we get up there head pressure going really high subcooling super high this is all indications of a restriction or the wrong size piston Now, since we're done depleting the ozone, I mean, recovering the refrigerant, we can go ahead and unscrew this uh, nut right here, pull this off, and we'll be able to see that piston. little bit of pressure left in it all right so after getting that piston out there was just a little bit of debris in it nothing that would be major and cause any type of head pressure issues you can see it on the tip of my finger right there so um, don't think that was really the problem you want to hold it up to the light and just check and you can see straight through it and then you'll be able to see if there's any type of blockage in it. A lot of times you'll see um, there'll be a piece almost completely covering the outside of it right here. Um, but this one wasn't awful. But the next step is to look and make sure this is the correct size piston because I don't believe that it's going to be. All right, so we're going to go to Goodman's site, their piston chart. You can find that on on, uh, on Google, just putting Goodman piston sizes. Um, but we're looking for a GSX uh 3036 which is a three ton there it is and then we follow that line all the way over and it should give us our piston size and our piston size is a 65 so that piston that's in there is incorrect so that would definitely cause um much lower um superheat it would be flooding in that refrigerant um if it's too big of an orifice so this is our old one it is the numbers are on the side, a 057. So, big difference there. That will also um, can throw off your readings, make you think other things are going on that's really not. So, um, like I said, there was some trash inside of that piston. Um, not a whole lot. Maybe not to the uh, extent that it would be causing the pressure, the head pressure to get that high. Um, but I do know for sure that it did not have the right size in it. This one was actually taped to the outdoor unit and they usually are um, when it's time to install. But um, whenever they did this, they apparently didn't do that and left the piston that came with this ADP coil. So we're gonna put the correct size piston in it. Um, and it could have been both factors. The piston was a little dirty, but the biggest thing was probably gonna be that it's not the right size. So we're gonna get this one put in it. And 
we're gonna get our new washer, stick it in there. And then we're gonna throw this back on here. Get it tightened up and pull us a really good vacuum on it. Get that refrigerant put back in and then let's check out the new pressures. All right, got our vacuum pump hooked up on our S-Man gauges. Um, and we're ready to start pulling a vacuum on this baby. So we're gonna get going on it. Also, if you don't have one of these jumpers um, <clears throat> for um, any type of plug-in, I don't even carry a drop cord on my van because you can always find a place to wire this in. This is only um, 115 volts, so you would just go off one side with your black and your other two will hook up to your uh, ground. Extremely, comes in handy so much. Um, so I would definitely recommend getting picking one of those up, especially when pulling vacuums. Um, this one does have an outlet, but it's not working. So, um, so yeah, a little bit of useless information, but hey, maybe someone will see it and be like, hey, I really needed that. All right, enough rambling. Let's get this thing kicked on and pull us a good vacuum. And I'll be back once we hit about 500 microns. All right, guys. So got the vacuum pulled good. Uh, put the refrigerant back in that we had recovered. Um, I had to add about um, a little under a pound um, to what was there just to uh, get it back exactly where it needed to be. But let's look at these pressures and see how much of a difference it is. So as you can see, <clears throat> these pressures couldn't be any more perfect. Um, we're dead on the money with the sub cooling, the superheat, the suction line temperature, um, the liquid line temperature is slightly uh, low, but it's just, it's been really cool outside. Um, but this thing's dead on the money. The problem was the piston 100%. So man, what a difference. Um, so it goes to show you, you put the right piston in it, the, the number that's called for, and this thing works exactly how it's supposed to. Um, so yeah, it might have been a slight restriction in that piston, but the biggest problem was the, um, the orifice size uh, wasn't installed correctly. So they probably just put the one that came with that coil. Um, since it's not a Goodman coil, they, they always come with one. So they probably just left that one in there, installed it, and, uh, and just let it go. But this compressor would have gave out and it just wasn't cooling like it should. So. Um, Definitely, uh, I'm glad we got this one uh, to show it on video. The type of size to look for when you have a um, when you have a mi mix matched uh, orifice size. Um, so I hope y'all enjoyed this one, and we'll see you at the next one.